Good morning to our viewing and listening audiences. The Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago extends a warm welcome to each of you. We are happy that, to have you worship with us today on this, on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost as we follow our liturgical calendar. Our celebrant for this morning is the Venerable Archdeacon Baldeo. He is assisted by the lector Colin Alexis, lay minister, and myself, Deacon Carl Scipio. Please join us in our opening hymn, CPW 389, We Gather Together to ask the Lord's blessings. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chases and chases his will to make known the wicked oppressing the seas from distressing. Sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own. His My dear people of God, we welcome you to this Thanksgiving service as we are coming to you from the parish of the Holy Saviour in QF. A service begins on page 100 of the prayer book and continuing thereafter. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And because I was glad I will worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And his kingdom. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. word. Teach, us Teach us to, to pray, pray for your world and your church. Grant, Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, 
and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The colic for the day, colic proper it, to be found on page 175 of our prayer book, proper it. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. <clears throat> Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We are now going to have the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the Word of God, written in the second book of Samuel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jasher. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the street in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothe you with crimson, in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Psalm number 130. Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for him. In his word 
is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. More than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the Word of God, written in the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, beginning at verse 7. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but... I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn, CPWI 314, God of mercy, God of grace. <laughs> Gospel according to Mark. Christ the Lord. Savior. When Jesus had crossed again into the boat on the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly. My little daughter is at the point of death. 
Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well and live. So he went with him. And the large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhage for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the leader any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talita, kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately she got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. And this, and they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them, to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of Christ. Christ, awesome. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Kindly sit if you're standing. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before Jesus, and told him the whole truth. But overhearing what they said concerning the daughter of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus said to the leader, do not fear, only believe. We see a woman coming to Jesus in fear and trembling. We hear Jesus giving the assurance, don't fear, do not fear, only believe. Words from Mark's Gospel, verses 33 and 36. The Webster's Dictionary 
describes fear as an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. An unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. Fear, my dear people, in itself is not bad, as it helps and guides us along the channels of survival. It protects us when needed. Fear is an active ingredient in our lives. The problem is, how does fear interfere with our faith and our allegiance to God? We live in a world where because of environmental and other factors, fear is a central characteristic of our lives. Fear of diseases, fear of death, fear of broken relationships, fear of financial calamity, fear of natural occurrences are just some. Most of the times, though, the absence of God through the power of the Holy Spirit gives rise and sustenance to these and other fears. If fear is not godly in its power, fear can cripple us mentally, socially, physically, and also spiritually. My dear people, our fears can only be relieved and be overcome when we understand the God that we serve, when we understand our position in God and our relationship with God. Isaiah puts it like this, Isaiah 43 verses 1 and 2. But now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by name. And listen to this phrase, thou art mine. But Isaiah did not stop there. He continued, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Words of conviction, words of assurance that the God we serve is always with us. Someone once said, and I quote, fear is the little dark room where negatives develop. That might be so, but listen to what David said. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, 
your rod and staff, they comfort me. Sisters and brothers, as you continue to live, as we continue to live, there are going to be circumstances in our lives in which fear will be the dominant factor. I say to you, do not lose faith in Jesus Christ. You will face moments like Jairus or that woman who had been sick for 12 years. Your life right now may be on a balancing scale. Today, sunshine. Tomorrow, thunder showers. Do not give up. Jesus will remain through all your trials with you. Things may not seem to be working how you want or according to your plans and the timeline. Your earthly sufferings may not end until God in his goodness calls you home. I want you to know that the power of Jesus Christ and Jesus has that power to deliver you into eternal life with eternal peace. Fear and loss of faith have caused many to lose their lives and that eternal destiny. Remain in the knowledge and presence of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just to reflect slightly, all Jesus had to say to Jairus' daughter is get up, and she came back to life as if she was sleeping. God knows your fears, and God hears your prayers. I want to repeat that. God knows your fears. And God, know, God hears your prayers. And so he's saying to you, my child, my brother, my father, my daughter, my son, do not fear, only believe. You may be in that position like that woman who was sick for 12 years. You want to give up. Keep on praying and do what is necessary as you let God's will be done. The God that we serve today is still Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Your financial situation may not be what you would like it to be. Just remember that the God we serve owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Perhaps, young woman, you have been married for some time now, and there is no evidence of a child, do not give up. Do what is right, compounded with prayer. Sarah was childless until she was 90 years old. Moses, in obedience to God, with a piece of seemingly lifeless stick in his hand, gave the people a pathway to freedom as they crossed the Red Sea, demonstrating the power of the God that we serve. 
as long as we are seeking God with all our hearts, no matter what, appear, what happens, God is right here with us. And so, yes, we must be concerned, but there is no need to be afraid of the future. God is present with us. No need to fear in making the right decision. However difficult the consequences may be, God is present with us. No need to fear present hardships or seemingly dead situations. God is present with us. Situations can arrive in our lives when we least expect them. That they can be life-shattering. I want you to remember, my dear people of God, He who holds tomorrow holds our hands. Do not let fear stop us from holding on to Jesus' garment. He is still our bridge over troubled waters. He is still the bright and morning star. He is Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. He is Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We sing these words ever so often, but do we internalize these words into our life? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And listen to the chorus, my dear people. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Oh yes, all of the ground is sinking sun. Let us not forget that God is our refuge. God is our hedge. God is our shield. Remember, my dear people, that the God that we serve still holds power the power of powers on this earth. For indeed, he is an awesome God. He who spared not his own son, shall he not freely give us all things deservingly? Yes, God that we serve can permit that earthquake to shake and still allow you to get up in the morning. Give God the glory for that. He could have allowed that earthquake to shake that you all would have experienced. But look, you are here praising that same God. To God be the glory. What an awesome God we serve. I remember the days growing up as a little child when we found ourselves in darkness or something would scare us. We would run behind our parents, hold on to their clothes and all the fear would have gone. God is saying this morning to you, my child, God is saying to you this morning, my daughter, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister, come and hold on behind my garment. 
and I will fight your battle. I will bring solution to your problem. I will solve your issues because you by yourself cannot do it alone. Let us run behind Jesus as we put him in front. Like David and Goliath, God will win our battle. There is no cup so empty that God cannot fill. There is no body so naked that God cannot clothe. There is no belly so hungry that God cannot fill. There is no mountain so tall that God cannot climb. There is no valley so deep that God cannot reach. Sisters and brothers, there is no pain so deep that God cannot relieve. He is still the God of miracles. He is still the God who answers prayer. He is still the God whose love is renewed every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And so, my dear people, I pray, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May you remember all your sacrifices and accept your offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. And then may we shout for joy over your victory. May God lift up your banners in his gracious name and may the Lord grant you your request. Just to remind us, the God who holds tomorrow holds our hand. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now stand and we affirm our faith in that God who holds tomorrow. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, page 106. I believe in God, the Father oh, Almighty, my. Creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. For intercession this morning, we will use form H. And those of us with a prayer book, it is to be found on page 120 and continuing. Form and so we continue in prayer, Father God, as we bring before you this nation, Lord. We bring before you, God, the families individually and collective. And Lord, those who are steeped in fear, fear of sickness, fear of the environment, fear of their present situation, Lord. Give them that assurance that you are there with them. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I lift up before you, Lord, this diocese. I lift up before you, O God, as we move forth in the name of Jesus Christ. That if there is any spirit of division because of fear, Lord, you will rebuke it and remove it and bring unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, yeah, our prayer. prayer. And we continue in thanksgiving, page 120, form H. By way of intercession, the prayers of the church, we offer prayers for all victims of natural disasters worldwide. We pray for the Anglican Church throughout the world, for the well-being of the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby. In the worldwide cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Hong Kong. In the Church of the Province of the West Indies, we pray for our Archbishop, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. In our diocese, we pray for our Bishop, the Bishop, our Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago, the Right Reverend Floyd Berkeley. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, today we pray for the Good Shepherd Church, Tunapuna, for the Venerable Kenley Baldeo, Archdeacon North. We pray for the state prisons. We pray for the hospitals and the cadet corps. Continuing with Form H, we pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our Father. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yes, yeah, our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. Our closing prayer. On page 122, number 3. Almighty and eternal God, rule of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, our God is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we use form A, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, O Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, 
and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, joy, and love inspired by the Holy Spirit. They who do serve Christ, Christ are acceptable, acceptable to God and approved by others. We greet each other in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. The Offertory Hymn, CPWI 479, Dine Forever, God of Love. Continue on page 126 and following of the prayer book, page 126. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, they will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, Lord, and of your own and do we, we give you. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up, up to, the Lord. to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We continue using form E on page 142. Form E. 
serving Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love, you fashioned us in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to share our human nature. In the power of the Holy Spirit, he overcame the power of sin and death and brought your people to new birth as first fruits of a new creation. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your dearly beloved Son, we remember his death, he proclaimed his, his resurrection. resurrection. We, we await his coming in glory. And we offer you, Father, a sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord and Redeemer. As we partake of this holy food of new and unending life, may your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints and your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory Amen. and power be yours forever Amen. and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior's daughter, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive his body which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Grant us, gracious Lord, that we may see the flesh of your dear son Jesus Christ and drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Our communion hymn, number 603. Let us break bread together. 603.
And so we thank God today for this opportunity once more to come and praise and worship and magnify his name. We thank God that God holds the key to all the rooms of fear in our lives. And because God holds the key, he has the authority to unlock them. And so we say together, as we turn to page 148, Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as you leave this blessed place, may the Spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones this day and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn, number 239, The Right Hand of God, 239. <laughs> be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Please continue to have a wonderful day.